Hey, Misty. Hey, Wayne. So, Misty, what are we waxing and waning about today? Let's talk about kids. More specifically, raising responsible children. Responsible kids. You know, I think most parents have this secret desire, right? This desire that each of their children leave home after high school and then don't boomerang back. I think we all want to raise a kid who at age 18 is able to survive and begin to thrive on their own. I don't think any parent wants to raise a kid who at 19 or 20 years old can't do a load of laundry or hold down a job to pay the rent. Now, we all know that kids are all different, so sometimes children need a year or two more to get them on their feet. But I don't think anyone strategically plans, that any parent strategically plans for their children to remain at home until, say, 25 years old. Oh, no, absolutely not. Okay, back over, I'm thinking back over the last decade or so. We have spoken a lot about responsibility. Yeah, we sure have. I think it began when we were teaching, and I remember that fifth grade class I had, you know, 10-year-olds turning 11-year-old, and, you know, they're irresponsible behavior sometimes. And it really got, you know, I think it gets to any teacher, irresponsible behavior, but not turning in homework, forgetting their materials. And I remember thinking, when our kids are 8, 9, 10, 11, you know, those years, I don't want our kids to be irresponsible with these things that they are clearly capable of being responsible for. So I think we started reflecting a lot and then reading some you know, articles, books, listening to podcasts to figure out how do we raise responsible kids. Yes, we certainly did. I mean, can you think back to what we can do to encourage responsible behavior? I think a big one is to give our kids confidence. Uh, this is normally done through teaching them skills, maybe some basic skills on how to you know, do the dishes and that kind of stuff, and then empowering them to ask us if they want to do the dishes to raise money for new roller skates or whatever the case be. So giving them this confidence to try new things, practice their skills, and then even initiate them on their own uh, when they are motivated to. Recently, I've noticed that the kids, especially our daughter, has really gotten to like making her own snack in the morning. And boy, what do you think about that breakfast yesterday? Oh, that was awesome. It was amazing. To wake up and have breakfast made for you, absolutely brilliant. So we normally are so busy on the you know, Saturday morning, but we decided you know, this Saturday and actually the next few, we're going to kind of take it slow. And so the kids you know, were very responsible. They left us, let mom and dad sleep in a little bit. They took care of making breakfast and, yeah, I mean, practiced really, or, you know, responsible behavior. But I think a lot of that comes out of us kind of giving them that confidence to do those kind of things. Right. So, how do you think we can help encourage their helping behaviors? You know, make an environment for them where they want to help. So... Today, you cut our boy's hair, and I noticed something after the haircut, is he got the, the little broom and started sweeping up the hair on the floor. This was all on his own, his own idea, his own thinking. So, an environment that encourages helping behaviors is really important. I think it's something that we, you build over time, but, you know... Letting kids know it's okay to help and okay to take initiative. Right. Initiative. And I think it's also important to, you know, act normal when the kid does something like that. You don't have to act like, oh, this is so amazing. Great job, great job. Yeah, you're right. Basically, just, you know, thank you very much, little guy. You know, thanks for helping me out. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and also I think clear expectations are important. I mean, what do you think about that? I uh, think about that time when we were going nuts in the morning. We had just came back from Christmas break from Texas and we were trying to get back into routine, morning routine. And so we ha it was driving us crazy. Get your shoes on, it's time to go, brush your teeth. You know, we were doing all the work, really. So we had that family meeting on one, that one Sunday afternoon. We sat on the floor there with a big, large piece of paper. And we actually brainstormed together things that need to be done in the morning. Obviously, things like getting dressed, brushing teeth, 
coming to you for, you know, a girl's hair to get done, you know, those kind of things. And we wrote it down. It was very explicit, very clear. And then also, remember, we put that little sticker on the clock to show them at that time, we're going to be leaving. So at 7, 10 in the morning, daddy's leaving to take kids to school. And so if they're not ready, they walk out the door with their shoes in their hand or their socks in their hand. So, yeah, clear expectations I think are really important for for anything we really do, but especially for raising kids. Right. And, you know, we all want our kids to be successful. It's all about that. But, you know, sometimes we do need to let our kids fail. Yeah, this is a the hard one to, hard, hard pill to swallow. But before they leave us, us at like 18, right, we want them to make a bunch of mistakes. We want them to fail a lot so that they can be in a supportive environment to learn from those mistakes, those failures. Remember when our girl kept forgetting her name badge? Oh, yes. So, yeah, you've got a first grade kid who needed to wear a name badge to school every day. And instead of us reminding her, don't forget your name badge, or hey, you don't have your name badge, da, 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 we kind of let it be. And let the, you know, consequence do the teaching. So she would get to school, get in trouble, come back home. Oh, dad and mom, I got in trouble, no name badge. Oh, I'm so sorry. Anyway, then the next day she forgot it again. And then after a few days, though, she figured out a system on where to put the name badge, how to remember it. And now she pretty much doesn't ever forget her name badge. Anyway, this is just a little episode to kind of... uh, Talk about raising responsible kids. I think uh, all teachers and school principals will really appreciate it when we send kids to school that are responsible, etc. And and I think it will make for much better home life too when kids are pulling their weight, being responsible. So our hope is that you leave today's podcast with a line of thinking, an idea, or a question to ponder or research that will impact your family's world. Make it a great day. Bye-bye.